Okie dokie, everybody. Here we go. We are live. Um, thank you for joining me for another round of the Astro Babble. We are here on Facebook and Instagram uh, with eight more charts donated by lovely followers. Thank you to everybody who continues to support the live stream um, and my independent work as an astrologer. Uh, so we have these eight charts that people have lovingly sent in. If you would like to be a part of the queue, you can always send in your birth date, place, and exact birth time, and we will add you to the list. But we're here to talk about what the charts say, give you some basic astrology knowledge, some in-depth interpretation, uh, laugh, cry, have all the fun in the world, because this is just me kind of talking about astro stuff for an hour. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, let's go ahead and pop open a fizzy water, get to our interpretations, um, and see see what the stars have to say in these lovely charts. Okie dokie. So our first chart, we have a birth time of 7.45 p.m. in... I'm sorry, my dear. I'm not going to be able to pronounce that <laughs> because <laughs> I haven't practiced my, my English places enough. Um, but you know who you are. Uh, so first and foremost on this chart, uh, we have the Ascendant in Pisces. The Ascendant in Pisces makes Jupiter the ruler of the chart. Jupiter is in the fifth house of children, um, which is really, really interesting because we also have Mars in Cancer here and the Moon in Cancer here. Uh, in the fifth house of children, parents, creativity, sexuality, uh, lots of lots of good synergy here in terms of um, powerful chart placements. A Pisces ascendant naturally makes somebody very watery, very intuitive, emotional, spiritual, um, softer, kinder, gentler, almost to a fault. Water tends to conform to the vessel that it's placed in, meaning that a lot of a lot of the complaints when we get to people who have heavy water placements in their chart um, is that they don't really have a backbone, that they tend to be a little bit too conforming, that they tend to... Uh, be a little bit too adaptable is a good way to say it, but I guess it's your own personal experience, whether or not you want to view it as adaptable or spineless, you know, from, from that perspective. But boundaries as a whole need to be a little bit firmer when we have a double water sign um, in the chart. Jupiter ruling the chart automatically makes this person lucky, uh, especially because Jupiter is ruling the chart from the sign of his exaltation being Cancer, which is absolutely flawless. But also putting the ruler of your chart in the fifth house of children, parents, um, really does mean that being being a parent and having children is is the foremost pride and joy of your life. We also have multiple interesting dynamics uh, with the sun being in Virgo and Mercury being in Virgo. Uh, although it is retrograde, it's still in the seventh house of relationships. So just the idea of that spousal connection, that relationship, that family dynamic is so, so strong in the chart. It is absolutely profound how deep that is for you. Also to have the moon in Cancer ruling that Jupiter from the fifth house, like your maternal instincts, especially because Mars is here too, your protective maternal instincts are absolutely off the chart. Um, like you can smell danger a mile away. You totally have those those mom mom senses that just you got the eyes in the back of your head. You got those supersonic hearing ears. Like you totally got the the mom deal completely worked out. Um, in your chart. It also makes you just a very fierce uh, maternal figure. Uh, and I say maternal lovingly, regardless of gender, because cancer is known as the maternal sign and men and women can both be maternal. But in your chart specifically, we have all of these lovely cancer placements in the fifth house of parents and children that really just makes you um, such an ideal uh, comforter, nurturer, soother, um, Aider to those who cannot aid themselves. Having the Sun in Virgo and Mercury retrograde in Virgo in the seventh is an interesting combination because Mercury is in 
his exaltation in Virgo, but because he is backwards and combusts the sun, we have a little bit of an issue in the spousal department with communication. Um, words get lost on a regular basis. Um, the mind can often get trumped by the ego. Uh, there can be some organizational differences that happen because Mercury, that planet of the mind in the sign of organization, is backwards and also burning up because it's too close to the sun. So although we have good placements in the seventh house and we have a spouse who's going to be very attentive to the finer details, somebody who's going to be very task oriented, somebody who's going to complement a lot of your natural Virgo tendencies, unfortunately we do have this we do have this stifled communication aspect in the chart that does need to be a little bit slower, a little bit more concrete, a little bit more um, nuanced when it comes to sitting down with your partner of choice and, and working stuff out. What I would highly recommend you do is work through scripting exercises when you'd like to have an important conversation. Because we have Mercury, who's very, very good at communication, but Mercury retrograde combust tends to get inflamed really quickly and tends to get words backwards. So I'd like you to practice if you have an important conversation to have with a spouse. And likewise, you can tell them to do this to you too. Make a list of bullet points, make a physical script of what you would like to say, how they would answer uh, the second point that you'd like to say, how they would answer. Actually script out the conversation beforehand so that a lot of the miscommunication a lot of the missed words, a lot of the backwards thinking tends to be worked out prior to the conversation actually taking place. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? We have a north node in Libra, close to Pluto, but not conjoining, ruled by Venus and Leo in the sixth of work. Those are some major entrepreneurship tendencies. Um, also, Jupiter ruling the 10th house really does give a good a good indicator of, of success, but especially success as it relates to children and parenting being known for that space. If you're not working in that field or being recognized in that field of being um, a parent or working with children, I would highly recommend it. But you're also very connected to your spouse's work. And it wouldn't surprise me if also you work in some capacity with your spouse, not just from a parenting perspective, because we know that that's a full-time job in and of itself, but just the idea of you specifically going into business with your spouse. Um, I think one of the things that you're here to master is this eighth house of death, taxes, estates, um, utilizing other people's money, uh, the idea of things are impermanent, things will always be outside of your control. That's a very difficult lesson for Virgo to, to learn, period. But if we understand that there is power in leveraging resources that you don't control, there is a sense of massive growth when you realize that things are impermanent and you don't have control over them. There is a surrender that washes over the body that allows you to actually be more productive and less stressful in the long run. Cool. I think that's a good summary of our first chart. Thank you for, for donating that chart, my wonderful, wonderful dear. Um, Yes, so we have uh, Daniel, we have Linda, we have uh, a couple other people on Facebook. Uh, Oki One Doki, uh, Cole is on. Uh, we have Celestial Melody. Everybody who's jumping on, thank you so much. I appreciate it. We're on chart number two. Let's talk about Henny. Henny was born 11:15 uh, a.m. in Nottingham. We have we have the Brits invading the the. Um, the queue this morning. Absolutely lovely. So we have the Ascendant in Aries co-present with Saturn in Aries in the first house. It's an interesting dynamic, especially because Mars is ruling the chart in Libra in the seventh house of relationships. That's tricky, honey. That's very tricky. You've decided to put the Lord of your chart opposing Saturn, um, who is being ruled by that and Mars is not in a great place energetically because it's opposing its natural sign of, of Aries. So we have, we have some difficult relationship stuff. You identify so heavily with your spouse. Um, a lot of your personal power is sacrificed because of that. You know, I think, I think having Aries on the ascendant and having Saturn in the first house, you've learned very quickly 
how much you need to defend yourself, how much you need to become hard, how much you need to uh, really invoke sternness, how you need to uh, recognize that nothing in life comes easy unless you work for it. And I think you taking hold of a spouse uh, that actually has some of the opposite lessons to learn. Um, somebody who is very good at engaging social groups, somebody who um, is very action oriented, but does so in a balanced way. Somebody who has a tempered Mars, somebody who uh, is not as go-getter as you are, but can still keep up. Yeah. But that Mars in Libra does, does create some friction with personality and with spouse because there's this martial aggressive competitive energy in the relationship but they're trying to teach you hey not everything in a relation not everything in a relationship whether it's spousal whether it's friends whether it's rivals you know it's not always about competition sometimes it is actually about working together towards a common goal and that's something that unfortunately you've been conditioned to believe that unless you work hard you won't get success unless you bust your butt you're not going to achieve anything in life unless you know life is hard so get a helmet and that's not that's not uh your spouse's kind of two cents at all in fact they've learned from this Venus and Aquarius in your 11th, ruling the Mars and Libra from the 7th, that in fact there is a grace and there is a blessing to working with large groups. So that's interesting. You do have the Sun in Capricorn um, being ruled by the Saturn in Aries from the, from the first house, as well as Mercury in Capricorn at zero degrees in the 10th. I think that Again, back to that idea of you've just you've developed this very hardened, very rigid idea of how things are supposed to be, of what uh, the rules are of life, and you do not stray from those rules, and that will also be in some ways your your detriment. You know, it is a valuable skill, especially when paired with this 23 degree uh, moon in Virgo in the sixth. I think that you've learned over time that, again, playing by the rules is your strong suit. However, we also need to remember that, especially because you overly identify with your relationships, that your spouse isn't here to play the same game. They're here to teach you different rules. Yeah. So that conflict is, is an interesting play because you've decided, hey, I'm going to be so good at what I do, so efficient, so productive, but then I'm going to bring somebody else into my life to teach me how to not be as productive, to teach me how to bend the rules and potentially break them uh, for the good of the society and rewrite some of those standards that I have etched in my mind so clearly. Let's see, what else do we want to talk about in the chart? We have Jupiter and Pisces in the 12th, which is really nice. Um, it's at 22 degrees, uh, just out of opposition with the moon. Um, that Jupiter and Pisces in the 12th house does indicate like a large portion of healing um, happening from a from a spiritual perspective, but also from a medical perspective, um, it seems like there might be some autoimmune issues that happen, especially autoimmune issues that result in swelling. Because that Jupiter in Pisces, whatever whatever Jupiter touches, he makes big. Um, and Pisces is that sign of the lymphatics in the 12th house of hospitalizations. Um, we need to watch your fluid balance, your kidneys, um, as well as from a moon in Virgo standpoint, your small intestine. So that's just some stuff to be aware of. Yeah, especially with Mars ruling the chart uh, in Libra, the sign of the kidneys. The more I look at it, the more we just need to be really, really aware of anything that would tax the kidneys, your caffeine intake, your sugar intake, alcohol intake, um, even how much energy you exert throughout the day, making sure not to skip meals, um, all those things that, that really the, the kidneys both physically and energetically need in order to uh, thrive. The sun in Capricorn is ruling this north node in Leo in the fifth. This time around, you're kind of learning how to be a parent. But then also this, this sun in Capricorn, I'm just not a, not a super fan of it. 
because the sun the sun in capricorn is a little bit too hard to rule this north node in leo um oh that's it okay i understand that interpretation now so what we're looking at is we're looking at uh, children potentially being famous or having a lot of attention and a lot of the rules that you grew up with, a lot of those stubborn rules and mindset that you're able to pass down to the next generation actually help to coach them towards their own fame and progress. Uh, because as they start to blow up, as they start to get fame of their own, as they start to become more well-known in the world, the boundaries that you instill in them, the rules that you instill in them will serve their greater good. Um, and that's something that definitely I find uh, beautiful in the chart. But again, it's not about you being right. It's about you giving them the tools that they need to protect themselves. There is a difference. Okie dokie. Uh, good morning, uh, Lisa. Good morning, everybody on the Instagram and Raven and everybody who's jumping on. I appreciate you. We are on chart number three. We're going to talk about Dan next. So Dan was born 4.15 a.m. in Manchester. Let's take a peek at Dan. Uh, so we've got Scorpio Ascendant. Woo! Uh, Scorpio Risings in the house. Then we've got Venus in Scorpio, Neptune in Scorpio in the first house. Ooh, Dan. Those secrets. Those secrets, honey. We've also got Mars and Aquarius ruling the first house of self from the fourth house of family. Um, yeah, it's, it's such an interesting dynamic, Dan, because you're such a family man. When we put the ruler of the chart in the fourth house of family, there's just this identification of, I am the family unit and the family unit is me. However, to have Mars in the, the fixed air sign of Aquarius, oftentimes with Scorpio risings, the fourth house is ruled by Aquarius and there's this feeling of of I am not like my family. Um, I am the black sheep. And so one of the ways that you've decided to deal with this from a uh, from an internal perspective is to keep secrets. And I don't think that that's healthy in the long run. I think that everybody needs a private life and especially with a Scorpio rising, you need to respect that a private life is something that will always need to occur, especially with uh, the seventh house of Taurus being ruled by Venus and Scorpio in your first. I think that you keeping secret relationships, I think you needing to hide your relationships from your family. I think you having um, this, this underground world where you can actually be yourself and vent some of these Scorpio tendencies while respecting that on the surface, you don't fit in in a regular basis with the people who, uh, who you are related to. Like, honey, that's perfectly fine. Everybody goes through that, but it's just more important that you etch out that kind of underground bunker and exercise those Scorpio placements a little bit more fiercely because you know, we can't have your idea of the perfect family ruined because they expose this this underworld side of you that Scorpio loves to play in so much. Um, so keeping the two worlds separate, it, separate, it's a definite balancing act uh, that needs to be refined over time. But I think having a moon in Gemini in the eighth is definitely one of the ways that you can separate your emotions. You can experience a variety of emotional extremes and say, this half is for when I'm in private, this half is for when I'm in public, and you're good to go. Um, and I think that that's really good, especially with a full moon in, in Gemini. You've got a lot of the feelings, mister, um, a lot of the feelings, especially with uh, Mercury and Sagittarius uh, and the sun in Sagittarius opposing that moon. That's that's pretty interesting. You've got a very sharp mind as well. Um, with these Scorpio placements and with this this Moon, Gemini, Mercury, Sun, Sag, um, you definitely know how to put on a happy face and you know how to manipulate the energies of a room and you know how to make other people happy, but also you know how to pick and choose the words that you use in order to keep everybody happy. You're a great pleaser of people is a good way to say it. Um, you're also intellectually fascinating, which is which is a fun quality to have. However, again, we need that private time. We need those things that are hidden to stay separate from all of this jovial nature, all of this emotional back and forth that you have that in the lighter areas of your chart, so to say. There's a mutual reception between Saturn and Aries and Mars and Aquarius. 
and North Node in Aries as well in the sixth house. Wouldn't surprise me if you actually worked in the family business, if you worked with real estate, uh, because that sixth house is connected to the fourth house of family and home. Um, but also the North Node in the sixth house here, like you're here to learn how to specifically do an honest day's work. You're here to master your health concerns, especially with Venus and Neptune being in the first house. Um, in Scorpio, the sign of the bowels, the bladder, the sinus, the reproductive areas, you know, we need to understand how to master that physically tricky area of the body, especially with Saturn here in the sixth house of health. Um, Let's see, what else do we want to talk about? The mutual reception between Jupiter and Virgo and uh, Mercury and Sagittarius. That's, no, that's just the second reception. Yeah, second reception. But still, two mutual receptions in a in a row, that's, that's pretty good. And then a half reception with the moon in opposition. I think that's super fun. Um, You've got a really wide group of friends. You've got a great social circle. Um, you're also very picky about who you choose to to invite to the social circle. They almost need to have a certain amount of damage. They need to have a certain amount of depth and spontaneity with Pluto and Uranus here in Virgo, but also um, understand that you being picky with your friends also helps you to separate your worlds. You need somebody who's trustworthy in order to keep those secrets of the first house. Um... North Node and Leo, ruled by the Sun and Sag in the second. Uh, your legacy is going to be very financially oriented. Wouldn't surprise me if you do end up in real estate or investment, that you use those funds in order to leave a very, very substantial um, amount of financial legacy to those who you love, especially with that full moon being in the eighth house of inheritance, ruled by Mercury in the second house of finance. Um, and I think that that kind of weaves into your life purpose of you constantly realizing like, hey, I'm just here to do an honest day's work. My private life is my private life. Um, I'm here to make people happy. I'm here to give them a place to a place to call home. Um, and there's no shame in that. But there are pieces of me that will never see the light of day. And I'm OK with that. Awesome. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for sending me all of these messages. I appreciate you. I will add you to the queue as soon as I'm done. Um, but right now we are on chart number four, which is Ellie. Um, so Ellie, Eli, sorry, Ellie or Eli, one of the two. Um, love you, darling. We have a birth time of 1.58 a.m. in uh, Los Angeles. Good morning. Uh, so we have Aries on the Ascendant, Aries on the Ascendant ruled by Mars uh, in Gemini in the third. Interesting. You've put the, the ruler of your chart in the third house of writing, teaching, communication. So if you're not already in that field, I would highly suggest that you get on it um, and start to understand what it means to be a purveyor of knowledge. Ooh, a Mercury Kazemi. Uh, Mercury and the Sun conjoined at zero degrees of Cancer. Mercury is retrograde. Venus is also here in the fourth. That's fascinating. Where's the Moon coming from? Moon is in Aquarius in the 11th house of friendships, where that south node is located. Interesting. Interesting. Again, we've got a flavor of the home. So whenever we look at uh, planets in the fourth house, there is an emphasis on the idea of family and home life. Uh, you've put the sun here, one of your markers for a personal identity, as well as Mercury, the planet of the mind, um, and Venus, that planet of love and abundance. Having so much activity in the fourth house of family, uh, it wouldn't surprise me if you work in the home industry uh, as well. Um, but what's interesting about having a Mercury in Cancer retrograde conjoining the sun in the fourth house, that there's a lot of backwardsness, um, especially when we look at... Um, like Mercury, Mercury deals with mental intricacies, like the idea of if you were to work in the home industry, like you would specifically be really good at um, going in and identifying or inspecting the home and where things have gone wrong. Um, you'd be very good at kind of the mix, Mr. Fix-It. Like one thing that Cancer, Cancer does really well is fixes things, um, second only to Virgo. And when we look at that, that Mercury Kazemi in the fourth house of family and home, I think, although it is retrograde, like 
you've you've backlit it with the sun so a lot of your talent is to go into a home environment and almost feng shui it but also kind of pick and piece and rearrange and organize and figure out oh this was mounted incorrectly or the wiring is faulty here a lot of home improvement stuff because cancer is very much about order and movement of that water of those watery energies um, throughout the home in order to satiate the emotions yeah and again that mercury retrograde is ruling the sixth house of work so like you're 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 mr and mrs fix it like that's that's kind of the the big the big aspect of your chart because you've lit up that uh sixth house of work with this mercury kazemi in the fourth of home interesting uh let's see that venus in cancer is also ruling your seventh house of relationships which has some some very substantial placements we have jupiter and libra saturn in libra and pluto in libra retrograde all in the seventh house of finance um you certainly haven't made it easy on yourself uh, in the relationship department from that perspective. Being married later in life because of Pluto, especially because of Saturn as well. Saturn is in its exaltation in Libra, but it's co-present with Jupiter. Not really sure how I feel about that. Like you're you're attracted to somebody who's equally stern and abundant. Somebody who, you know, is sure, here, take the money, but then the next minute, like, nope, we have to save, we don't have enough. It's that it's that Saturn of restriction and that Jupiter of abundance wrapped up into the same person in Libra, somebody who frankly struggles with a lot of indecision from a spousal perspective. Um, but because you have that ascendant in Aries and that sun in Cancer and that moon in Aquarius, you know exactly what you want and need. So in some ways you're like the you're like the compass in their lives. You've decided to find somebody who, to a certain degree, is very grounded, who is very abundant, uh, who has a lot of, um, oh no, we won't bring in Pluto until halfway through the life, but somebody who's equally equally stern and abundant, uh, but they, they just suck at making decisions from a spousal standpoint. That's one of the pitfalls of Libra, um, if you didn't know that already. Uh, and having all of this all of this fixed cardinal energy in your in your chart really does help them make the decisions uh, that they need. And let's see what else. Also a North Node in Libra in uh, in Leo in the fifth house of family. Uh, again, family being so important, you being fifth house of children and parents, sorry, um, but that sun in Cancer is ruling that north node um, in the fifth house of children and parents. Like you're here, you're here to understand not just how to, not just how to fix a home, but also how to, how to invest in a family um, and how to make that work. Um, any oppositions? Nope, you're pretty free and clear from an opposition perspective. But again, I would highly encourage you if you're not if you're not already doing some writing, teaching, speaking, um, because you're so good at what you do and you've decided to to make this home environment um, so much of your focus, uh, both for your own kind of children and parents, but also for the the third house of writing, teaching, communication. I think it is going to be important for you to be a little bit more vocal, a little bit more sharing of your talents uh, from a third house perspective. Excellent. Um, good morning, everybody. Thank you for the messages. I will respond to them as soon as I can. Um, we're about half an hour in and we've gone through four charts. Uh, so let me just take a minute. Again, if you would like to be a part of the queue or if you have friends that would like to be a part of the queue, um, just have them private message me the birth date, place, and time of their birth date. Also, for those of you who are not in America, please make sure to spell out the month and day. I've had to redo a couple charts already because we haven't gotten the month and day correct because it's 3-4, and I don't know if that's March 4th or April 3rd. So spell that out, please, in the messages. Um, I do need that exact birth time. If you would like to uh, schedule a private session with me or check out some of my online classes, you can always go to ScorpioRisingAstrology.com, check out what I have to offer, um, purchase a class if you're enjoying the work. Um, you can also PayPal Venmo me uh, if you like the reading or like the live stream, uh, just Sam at ScorpioRisingAstrology.com or Sam Bellier, Sam Bellier on, on Venmo. Okay. 
Let's talk about um, Vishaka. Vishaka. Um, born 1043 a.m. in Orlando. Yay, Florida. Uh, let's take a peek, shall we? So we've got a Libra Ascendant, and I'm I'm a huge fan of a Libra Ascendant just because it adds a level of beauty to the face, it adds a pleasing exterior, it's the sugar coating of the chart, which I find fun. Um, you also have this Venus, oh, Venus and Jupiter in Cancer in the 10th house. You've decided, girl, that you're going to be well-known and famous. That's fun. Um, you're also very attached to the legacy that you will live. We do have some issues here in terms of some Capricorn oppositions, which is not very nice. Um, wow, you want to be, girl, you want to be out there. You want to be, you want to be abundant. You want to be prosperous. You've got this exalted Jupiter and Venus, both benefics in the 10th house of career and success ruling your chart. You've got, you've got the makings of a star girl, um, which is super fun, but, but you've decided very strategically that you're going to, um, you're going to besiege your moon with uh, Uranus retrograde in Capricorn, Neptune retrograde in Capricorn, and Saturn retrograde in Capricorn, smushing your moon in Capricorn, which is natally opposing the ruler of your chart from the fourth house of family. You've, you have decided, regardless of how it plays out, that you will be in the public eye and you will be well known for your work. However, However, and a lot of that, a lot of that publicity will be connected to family as well. However, putting all of this opposition from the family dynamic against that, that fame, I think that there may be family issues that prevent you or feel like they prevent you from living your best life, from speaking out about your truth. Uh, there may be some issues in the family that you will be speaking out about later in life. There may be multiple issues of that family and home uh, perspective that are directly opposing your 10th house of success. And that's where we need to get into a little bit of remediation, especially because all those planets are retrograde, like you're dealing with some stubborn opposition from the family space, girl. Um, and I think that that's some karmic healing that needs to be done for sure. Um, and that karmic healing definitely will be done in the form of you actually... Um, birthing the next generation. And I think that you fulfilling this North Node in Aquarius in the fifth house of children will really speak towards one of the ways that you turn over a new leaf from the family that held you back is by you rearing the next generation, taking on the next generation and saying, I will never do to you what my family did to me. Um, and that, that healing process of transformation, of making sure that you're allowing uh, your children in order to not repeat the uh, the mistakes of the parents. Uh, what else? We've got multiple placements in the health and wellness field. From a from a work perspective, we've got the Jupiter and Cancer ruling your sixth house of work from the tenth house work and health. From the 10th house of success, we've also got uh, Mercury in Virgo, the sign of his exaltation, in the 12th house of karmic healing, uh, but also hidden enemies, hospitalizations, uh, jails, rehab, ruling the 9th house of travel, foreigners, higher learning, and spirituality. So I think one of the, the big things that will be happening in the work environment is you understanding how people heal, uh, helping potentially walk people through their healing journey. Um, you're definitely, you definitely have the potential to be an icon or a figurehead or somebody that people look to as a leader in the field, especially with this son in Leo in the seventh, in the 11th house of social groups. I think that, you know, you're, you're somebody who naturally has this charisma, especially because it's so close to the South node. Um, you know how to, you know how to throw your weight around and you know how to get attention and you know how to use the sun and Leo to your advantage. And I think a lot of this sad, this Saturn and Capricorn energy in the fourth house is really making sure that you don't flaunt yourself or overexpose yourself to the point where you destroy a stable life. And that's something that we need to be aware of with so many 
outwardly oriented and healing oriented and giving and radiant placements, uh, Capricorn knows all too well that if you don't conserve your resources, if you don't pull back, if you don't ground yourself before taking on these massive projects, then you're not going to be able to succeed because you'll, you'll poop out halfway through. Money has always been an issue. We have Pluto and Scorpio opposing Mars in Taurus, the natural ruler of Scorpio, uh, on that second house of finance, eighth house of entrepreneurship and inheritance. Um, it's going to get easier about halfway through the life when you realize that you can find strategic partnerships that aid you from a financial perspective. But until that happens, um, money is not the root of all evil. Let me tell you, in fact, having Pluto in Scorpio is a great financial placement, but it is something that needs to mature halfway through the life. And those are really the major placements. Cool. Everything else just kind of loops back around. Awesome. Thank you, my dear, for submitting your charts to the queue. I appreciate it. Um, thank you, everybody who's sending me messages. I appreciate you. I will respond to you as soon as um, I can. Let's move on to chart number five, six. Are we on six? I think we're on six. Yeah, we're on six. So let's talk about Mark. Mark, how you doing? Uh, born 12.30 p.m. in Beirut. Uh, let's take a peek. Interesting, Mark. Interesting. So you've put a stellar... Ooh, a Venus and Aries. Kazemi. Ruling the chart. Mark, I'm fascinated by you. Interesting. So interesting. So um, you're just so cultured. Mark, so cultured, like Greek yogurt. Um, that was terrible. I'm so sorry. That was a bad joke. Um, but the, the ascendant in Leo is being ruled by the sun in Aries, the sign of its exaltation, which places the sun in an amazing, amazing place. Um, the sun actually prefers to be in the ninth house as well. It's said to be the seat of God um, from, from that perspective, which I find really, really honorable and nice. So very, very well placed sun for sure, as well as Venus is conjoining the sun at 12 degrees in Aries, uh, making a Venus Kazemi, which backlights Venus. There is a very, very good potential mark that you travel the world for competitive sport. Um, Aries is that competitive, military-oriented, um, war-based uh, energy and Venus especially, um, being in Aries, has this kind of conditional love where she's she's only interested in you if you're able to perform. And for you to put that energy in the ninth house of travel, foreigners, higher education, spirituality, I think that um, all those topics are not only very appealing to you, but also it wouldn't surprise me if you do a lot of traveling, engage with a lot of foreigners, especially from a competitive perspective. Uh, also, yeah, this Mercury and Aries combust the sun. You've got some, you've got some serious, oh, and in mutual reception with Mars and Gemini in the 11th. Hello? Hello? Mark, you are, you are so competitive. Why are you so competitive? Like, I get it. You need to be the first. You always need to be the first. But honey, ain't nothing wrong with silver. Ain't nothing wrong with silver. You've just decided that you're going for the gold, huh? I see you. I see you. Um, Jupiter and Gemini, honey, and that, that Venus Kazemi ruling the 10th, like, you got the charisma. You got it. Like, you're so appealing to the masses. Uh, you'd be a great spokesperson, for sure. This moon in Aquarius is interesting because it's ruled by the sixth Capricorn. Any spouse who you choose to spend your time with will likely be in your same field um, and or you will work in uh, the relationship industry. A lot of your work will be predicated on finding relationships, especially if we think of if we follow this this role of um, travel and culture and potentially competitive sport, the idea of sponsorships being a big uh, portion of your income as well. 
which again, like this Mars and Gemini, Jupiter and Gemini in the 11th, like you're such a poster child, Mark. Like Lululemon would freaking eat you up. Um, but you've got this Saturn, Neptune and Uranus all in Capricorn in the sixth house. You know, you know how to not have a good time. Uh, you know how to overly focus on your work. You know how to put your head down and just get the blinders on and only go, 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 go. Um, we do have uh, one more sinister aspect of the chart, which is this uh, retrograde Pluto and Scorpio in the fourth house of family. Uh, one of the reasons why you are so competitive is because you could not run hard enough away from the family dynamic, and I completely empathize with you. There's a lot of toxicity in that area of your chart. I get it. But one of the things that your chart also speaks to is the North Node in Pisces and the eighth house of death, spiritual, uh, to a certain extent, spirituality. Um, I think one of the one of the interesting parts of your chart is how you actually start to heal, how you actually start to uh, release some of the ties that bind you and get rid of some of these shackles that you're so these these weights that you've put on yourself that you're so. Um, like sick of but also clinging on to for dear life because they have molded you into the person that you are today is actually getting enough accomplishments underneath your belt to where you feel like you've left that world behind um and unfortunately that comes only over time with you developing new friendships uh managing your own investments uh, understanding financial wellness, becoming an entrepreneur, um, understanding that death is also a very healing experience. Um, when the relationships that held us back pass away, or when we choose to cut people out of our lives, that can also be an excellent opportunity for us to choose the people that surround us, the influencers that surround us, and we no longer need to be so weighed down by the ghosts of the past. So that's that's pretty much it, Mark. You've you've put this lovely stellium in the ninth of travel, foreigners, higher education, and spirituality, and I think that that really drives the chart. We've got the toxicity in the fourth of family. We've got the work ethic in the sixth, spousal stuff connected with the sixth of work, um, and then this charisma in the eleventh house of friendships. I think you're I think you're pretty much set. So just ride the wave, and if you'd like to work one on one on some of the darker aspects of the chart, we totally can. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody, for um, the messages. I will respond to you as <laughs> as you like it. I'm glad that you liked the Greek yogurt comment. Um, <laughs> ain't nothing wrong with silver. Uh, Y'all like that one? Y'all like it? <laughs> you crazy. You crazy. Um, okay, let's get on to our seventh chart. Um our seventh chart is going to be my love, my darling, my baby, MK. How are you? Uh, so we've got MK. Now the Florida, Florida chart. We've got we've got the UK invading the first part of the uh, first part of the live stream, and then uh, Florida uh, invading the second part. So we've got uh, MK born at 10:57 p.m. in uh, Brandon. Let's take a peek. Yep, and there's that Libra ascendant. Girl, I knew you was pretty. Uh, Libra Ascendant, again, is that sugar coating of the chart. It gives superficial beauty to the face. It graces the physical frame. It allows a more Venusian idea of beauty to come forward um, in the chart, especially with the ruler of the chart being Venus in Pisces in the sixth house of work. Not only are you a workaholic, my dear, but it wouldn't surprise me if you did fashion, if you did modeling. I know that for a fact um, because Venus is exalted in your chart. So Venus is in uh, her most favorite sign of Pisces and to have an exalted planet ruling the chart, it just really overemphasizes the quality of that planet's influence on the chart. So we have this beautiful Libra ascendant creating the body that is that is gorgeous. And then we have Venus and Pisces, an exalted planet in the sixth house of work, indicating working and fashion and modeling and things of that nature. Mars and Pisces is also here in the sixth house of work. So the idea that there is a strong competitive streak, there is this idea of potential aggression, um, even working with gender roles in the workplace, um, specifically like if you were to do fashion shoots as both male and female personalities, um, or working in a male dominated field as 
a woman, you know, all these things where we have the masculine aspect of Mars and the feminine aspect of Venus co-present within this work environment, co-present within Pisces, um, and creating this really nice synergy of masculine feminine um, in the uh, in the thing, in the in the sixth house of work. Yes. Capricorn stellium in the fourth house, though. That's interesting. Um, am I a fan of that? No, not really. Um, this Sun in Capricorn, this Jupiter in Capricorn, this Mercury in Capricorn, this Neptune in Capricorn. I mean, you were raised in such a strict household. Like, all this Capricorn. Absolutely ridiculous. Um, the rules were the law. And the law was the rule. Um, there are so many nuances of the chart as well. This Jupiter at 25 degrees is making a trine from the 4th to the north node in Taurus in the 8th. Wouldn't surprise me if there was a death of the parent, um, of the primary parent in the relationship, um, which will then fuel your 8th house north node working with entrepreneurship maybe um a foundation in his honor maybe working with the the eighth house north node in terms of entrepreneurship uh investment legacy inheritance uh from that experience as well um in the chart yeah actually there's there's quite a few markers in terms of financial legacy that are being left in the chart we have this Pluto in Scorpio making a trine to the MC in the 4th uh, in Cancer, or MC in the 10th in Cancer, sorry, um, which is another big financial marker when it comes to success. Um, but it's all ruled by Mars in the, in the 6th. What else do we see? Uh, we've got this moon in Sagittarius and this Uranus in Sagittarius in the third. You know, there is this there is this need to write, there is this need to teach, there is this need to speak. But a lot of the writing, teaching, speaking that you would do has this very Sagittarius energy, this very flamboyant energy, this very mutable fire energy that tends to be rather... Um, be rather all over the place, not as easy to control. Spunky, um, especially with Uranus here. Uranus tends to blow up Sagittarius. It's a very firework approach to teaching. Like you get up there and you just talk a mile a minute and you derail and you backtrack and you definitely are um, charismatic, but people leave that and they're like, wow, that was really entertaining. I'm not really sure what I learned, but it was very entertaining. Um, and that's kind of your, your style of, style of, of teaching. Uh, third house and fourth house are connected via a rulership of that Jupiter in Capricorn in the sixth. So it wouldn't surprise me if you did a lot of teaching from your home. Um, if you did a lot of virtual teaching, um, that might be something to, to consider as well. We have who on the, who on the ascendant? We have Aries on the ascendant, um, spouse potentially working in the same field as you because that Aries uh, on the seventh is ruled by uh, Mars in Pisces in the sixth, which is interesting because you're, you're attracted to somebody who has those Aries qualities of um, ambition and drive and passion and com competition and uh, this kind of happy-go-lucky charge forward cardinal fire nature, but the spouse that you will choose um, you'll often meet through your workplace and they will have this squishy Pisces center that you just fall in love with. Um, they will have that martial, that Aries quality that's very, very combustive and fiery, but because your Mars is in Pisces in the six, they have this like gooey, chocolatey, melty center that you just absolutely adore. Cool. So that's your chart, my dear. Thank you so much. I appreciate you donating your chart to science. Uh, cool. So I think we've got, we're at 48 minutes. We've got one more chart to go through. Let's talk about Daniel. Daniel, I know you've been waiting. You've been waiting this whole time. Let's talk about you. Uh, we've got 8.09 AM in Rapid City. Let's take a peek. Hmm. I'm aware.
Okay. Yep. So when we look at your chart, Daniel, one of the things to be aware of is you have this ascendant in Leo um, ruling your son in Cancer in the 12th house of hidden enemies. And whenever we see the Lord of the chart, um, especially if the Lord of the chart is the son, two of the major uh, markers for personality in the 12th house of hidden enemies, we need to respect that you are often your own worst enemy, and we need to surround you with people, places, and things that are a little bit more uplifting, um, who are able to pull you out of that 12th house mindset, uh, because you do tend to be very, very difficult on yourself. You do tend to be very focused on healing, very focused on um, the impact that you leave in the world, very focused on uh, these 12th house topics of potentially working or um, being of service in jails, in rehab facilities, um, in hospitals where people put themselves away in order to undergo a deeper, oftentimes traumatic recovery journey. You identify very heavily with that journey. We just need to make sure that you don't drown um, in that 12th house as you discover all of these very sensitive cancer placements with your Mercury and Cancer retrograde. One thing that I would like to point out is your Mercury and Cancer retrograde does make your communication backwards. A lot of people have a very hard time understanding you, uh, but all you want to do is is care for them. Unfortunately, your words will only make sense to those who are also backwards, and I think in the middle of that healing journey. It's, it's something that I find with Mercury retrograde in the 12th house that I find really, really fascinating, is you have this language that's very in between, and so when you approach somebody who's quote unquote normal, yeah, just average, you know, Joe Jane on the street, um, Tiffany for good measure, and you are just able to to talk with them one on one. They're like, you know, I really don't understand where you're coming from. But if you see like Mama Sue or Doreen or um, Caleb in on their deathbed, you know, while they're in spiritual crisis, while they're in the middle of this 12th house healing journey, the words that you say are actually very pointed and specific and they're like wow i i never thought of it that way and your backwards mercury only really starts to come forward in those situations of crisis where people understand oh my gosh that's genius but normal people don't really the muggles don't really get it daniel just just as an fyi in case you didn't realize that however my dear, this this Mercury is ruling your second house of finance. So I think that you investigating the healing journey is going to be very, very important for you. Um, I would highly suggest a career in nursing, in hospice, um, working in those traumatic places where people go for healing, working in a rehab facility, in a mental institution, places where people are literally seeking at their lowest level um, to, to kind of rise like a phoenix from the ashes. You would be uniquely qualified to financially benefit from those experiences um, and to navigate them because you are currently undergoing a lot of that yourself in this lifetime with the 12th house stuff. We have this moon, Jupiter, and Saturn all in Virgo in the second house of finance, which is fascinating. Um, the idea of your emotional health being very tied to your bank account. Um, another reason why, like you could be doing an honest day's work and you could be doing all these things that you quote unquote love to do, but unless you're actually making good money from it, the heart isn't going to be tapped. And that sounds a little bit shallow and selfish and, and money mongering when, when you think about the words that I'm saying, but when it comes to you understanding that you feeling emotionally safe because of the savings that you have in the bank, that's security. Yeah, that's emotional stability. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing to be ashamed of with that. We do have um, the North Node in the first house as well, Daniel, and I think one of the things that you're going to be working on this time around is you just developing a solid sense of self. Um, you've already learned how to navigate relationships. You don't necessarily need that in your life um, this time, although it would be nice. And I think that there is financial gain from the relationships that you do choose from a spousal perspective, um, and they will often be financially motivated. So that could work in or out of your favor, just depending. Um, but the idea of you having the North Node in the first really means that like your sole purpose this go around is to form a personality, to be somebody who is confirming uh, who is firm in their own beliefs, who is, uh, who is firm in their own convictions, who has a, a sense of who they are and why they are and what they do. Um, and that's a big part of your, your journey this go around. Yeah, unpredictable family dynamics, 
totally didn't see that coming. Um, when we look at Uranus and Scorpio retrograde in the fourth, that unpredictable energy of Uranus in that um, hidden underbelly, slightly addictive, emotionally manipulative at its worst, but secretive and still sly and hypersensitive, uh, and the planet being retrograde all in the fourth house of family. It's messy. Um, da, da, da. Also siblings as well, carrying on that legacy. Teaching, teaching is kind of difficult for you. Speaking, writing, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a little bit of dyslexia, if there was a little bit of um, public speaking phobia, because we do have this Mars in Libra, the sign of uh, the sign of its fall, and then we also have Pluto in Libra here in the third house of writing, teaching, communication. Make it a little bit difficult for you to specifically engage large groups or to to transfer your message, and I think that that's also part of the Mercury retrograde equation. Um, what else do we want to talk about? We want to talk about the idea of you leaving a strong legacy of friendships and community. I think that this Venus and Gemini, which, I mean, honestly, you're getting, you're getting hit really hard with the Venus retrograde right now in Gemini and everything moving over this Venus, like your friends are going through the ringer right now. Um, your friendships are very, very important at this point, but because this Venus is ruling your 10th house of success, I think one of the things that you're going to be leaving a legacy of and that you're going to be really successful with is working with large groups and understanding the impact that you make over time uh, within a social dynamic and a social construct, not necessarily from a from a leadership role, but just from you being able to hold space and share presence and allowing people to find clarity amidst all of the healing placements of your chart, which they might lack themselves. Cool. I think that's about it. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for uh, jumping on. That is all the time that I have today. Um, yes, and uh, I see all of your messages. I appreciate you. Um, if you would like to be a part of the live stream, if you would like to get your name on the list for the queue, just send your birth date, place, and exact birth time to me via private message, and I will add you to the queue, and I'll message you when your chart is going to be featured. There is a list, and I am balancing the reopening of my bodywork practice at the same time, so I think I'm doing Monday, Wednesday, Friday, now during the week in the morning, um, but all these are being recorded. They are up on YouTube. If you want to look at previous live streams because you like the content, I'll put a link in the YouTube for the YouTube channel in the, the live stream on Facebook. Um, and yeah, if you'd like to book a private session, if you're interested in astrology, want to go deeper, want to learn astrology, you can always go to my website, scorpiorisingastrology.com. And I think that's pretty much it. Thank you for joining me. Um, I love you, love you, love you. Uh, it wouldn't be possible without you. And until next time, may the stars be ever in your favor.